Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Alps Panorama at the Northern Sea here in Farming Simulator 19. It's half past seven at night. We, I, well, Actually, we might have enough. See, 16 litres. We may have enough to see the chickens through the night and then we can feed them in the morning. Maybe we'll do that. Let's tuck that one back in. I'll leave the bucket on because I'll want that in the morning anyway. Okay. I'll bring you over to there and we will stop and I think that's everything now. I got the fertilizer here but we'll be using that later on. So let's go over to our house and we can speed up time a little bit and then we will skip the night. Half past eight and it's still not got dark so we're going to wait till nine o'clock. Then we should be able to skip the night. Now we're on day six late spring. So we've got a couple more days yet before we actually move through to the beginning of summer when the grass should be a little bit longer than it is now. So we'll do that and then I will go like this and we will go for 12 hours sleep. It'll take us through until 9 a.m. 4,800 animal upkeep. Oh, some, we're doing two days. Don't show again. Uh, okay. I probably could have done all right with that. So 6,153 income from the livery stable, $4,800 in animal upkeep. Loan was 3,200. We've got property maintenance of 2,000. So the horses are bringing us in six grand a day by the look of it. We're now in the summer. So let's have a look. We've got wheat and barley right here, 142. So we are soon going to need a bit there. We're going to want some more water as well. Cows over this way, we have got some not fertile at the moment. Some are still 0.7 years. So we're not going to get any milk yet. Grass is down, hay and silage is down, water has gone way down. That's all sort of stuff to be expected. Hay in there, 4373. That's not really changed. The water has changed because it's now summer. That one's up to 83% on there. $302, $351. So how? I'm not really sure how. Have I got to sell them then in order for this to work? Is that how that works? Not really sure about that. The other thing that we want to check now is how is the crops doing? We've got this one up here. Harvest. Oh, that's the patches that didn't grow. And then we've got germination failed. We've got more. Why is that harvested? Why have I got some patches of harvested and some patches are germination failed? Right, that's something that I'm going to have to go and have a look at. Growth over there anyway. So it, it, it's growing along quite nicely. I've got a little bit of weed growing in field four. We've got some weeds growing in those, but that's grass. So that doesn't really matter. And then if I go to grass like this and then we go to growth, it's ready to harvest on those fields. It's much more ready to harvest on these fields. It is actually properly ready to harvest. And yeah, the rest of it. So... Yeah, those there, we need to wait for another growth stage before we can do anything with them. But we do have grass up here that we might be able to do something with. And we will have to consider doing that. I run up over here and put the water going for the horses right there. All right, I'll just leave that running. And we come over to the cows. The cows one takes quite a long time to fill up with water. So we make sure they've got plenty. I don't yet have the, um, I ha well, I haven't tried putting the uh, course play mod going for cutting some other fields. And it's something that I am still going to do. It is on my to-do list, so don't worry about it. We will eventually get the whole course play thing up and running and going. We're, we're going to be doing that. But what I want to do at the moment is I first, well... I want to go, I'm going to go over and have a look and see why I've got harvested and germination failed on some of these. I don't really understand what's going on with that. We do need to go and spray field four for weeds. So that's probably the next thing that we're going to do. But before I do the spraying field four for weeds, I want to head up over here and I want to see what's going on. Is this something to do with the weeds that were up here? Is that why we've got some issues? We also need to feed the chickens. I'll put a little bit of water. It doesn't take much for water for them. Um... So I want to run up here 
And I want to see what's going on with some harvested bits and some germination failed bits. Whether it's the germination failed, something to do with that, I I'm not quite sure. So this is just saying ready to harvest, although we know that grass does grow to the second stage for ready to harvest. And then we've got this over here. Now, why have we got stuff that's saying harvested? Are we, have we got patches... It's not the weeds. I thought maybe it was the weeds. I'm thinking that we might have an issue with dry fields. Because that is actually a thing, isn't it? Right, if we go uh, Alt-S there. And we go to the weather forecast. We're due for some rain tomorrow. We're actually due for a bit of rain tomorrow. So I want to go like this and bring this one. Like that. So this is the percentage that it's grown. We've got 7% moisture. That is moisture that, that's, that's how wet the crop is, I think. And that's how wet the ground is. So the ground is only 7%. So let's go and have a look at some of these bits of the ground here. Now that is germination failed. That right there. There's, there's nothing changed on that. So I need to find one of the other patches that is ready to har- uh, There, harvested. That bit over there. I reckon it's not harvested. I reckon that this is the ground is too dry. So how do we do this? 13.7. Potential for frost damage increases as air temperature falls below zero. Drought damage increases when soil water content is below 12%. So I'm pretty certain that this is drought damage because we've had no rain. So these patches that are showing up, showing harvested on the field, that's drought damage. Is there any way that we can increase the actual soil moisture content? Can I put water... This is all saying 98, 99%. Oh, it's... Yeah, see, 98% fertilized there. Uh, well, first up, we need to go and we need to spray the other field with weed spray, don't we? And then what I want to know is, is there any... Uh, I want this one here. Herbicide here over in field four. That's our next job. But can I put water in this machine? Let me go like that a minute and go there so that we've got rear wheel steering as well. Can I put water in this machine and spray water on the field so that we get, um, like, we, we actually irrigate the field? Is irrigation a thing, or have we just got to rely on the weather? Is it just, like, a gamble thing, or is irrigation actually a mechanic that we can use in the game? Now, I know that there are things that you can do irrigation with in the game, but whether or not they will actually apply water to the field for purposes of the season's mod, I don't know. I don't believe there is anything that will apply water to the field. Unfortunately, I think it is just a case of you can't do anything and you've got to hope and pray that the rain will come. Um, much like a lot of farmers do have to do in the world, I know that there is some places in the world where irrigation is a big thing. But a lot of the world, irrigation is not a thing. And you, you literally just hope and pray that the, the right weather will turn up. There's nothing else that you can do. So, I don't know what we're supposed to do in this one. As soon as we've done this, I'll take the herbicide out of here. And I will go and get, instead of the herbicide, I will put some water in here. We'll go over to where the water is and we'll see if we can load it up. I, I don't know if we'll even be able to do that. The only thing that we can do is drive into the water, hope that we don't drive in too deep, and then hope that we can actually make it work. So it, it could be interesting Need to drive this all the way around the outside edge first. I don't like that I'm spraying out onto the road, but I'm also very much aware that if I don't spray out onto the road, I'm just going to miss a strip all the way around the edge of the field. And to be honest, that's going to bug me more than um, spraying the road. I would, I'd would i rather spray the road than miss a strip. Go up through there like that. Um, yeah, this water thing. Really sure what we're going to do about that. Uh, 
we'll, we'll get this spraying done and then we can have a look. I will jump out and we will measure the moisture. Actually, let's just do that a second right here. Right, if we go here and we measure the moisture content just here. So we've got 13% there, 70% grown, 13 plant moisture, 7% ground moisture. And if I run over in front of this one, over here where we haven't sprayed yet, and we do it again, that's exactly the same. Right, so it's, it's nothing to do with that. The, the, the herbicide is not going to do anything at all. So we've established that one. This, this, this one question has been answered. Let's just back up a little bit because there's a bit missing there. And we can go forward. And we can come out like that. Right. Now. Ease that one on round like that. There we go. I'll get the old GPS running on this one. That'll do a nice job. I just love how fast this Hardy is. It's, it's an absolutely beautiful sprayer. Compared to the others, the speeds that this one does is phenomenal. It's absolutely wonderful. And yes, I should be on Euros and... Um, kilometers rather than what we're using but uh, I'm, I'm quite happy leaving it as it is for now I'm going to switch that one over I'm doing a little bit on one edge I think I'm hoping I am I'm gonna bring you up to about there is where I want to go so then I go alt E I need to do it twice for some strange reason that I've still not yet been able to fathom and then I go there again and that is correct. So then I go Control S on here, and I go Auto Width, 159 feet on that one. No offset. The lines are on. The snap terrain angle is on. Everything is as it should be. That one's in there, and then I can go Alt X like that. Probably shouldn't have left the thing spraying while I was setting this up, but still, there we go. And then I can bring you up here, switch you off there like that, we come along this side, and then I go Alt-X on here. It brings it over there like that and straightens up, and then I can reverse it back down and just straighten it up a little bit more. Okay. Now I can head up across the field, and this is where we find out if we've actually got anything that we need to spray in here. Because I'm looking at the middle of this field at the moment, and I am seeing... No sign that we're leaving anything behind on the ground. It doesn't look like we're leaving anything behind there. And also, so far I've not seen any sign of any weeds. Although I think it's a bit more difficult to see the weeds inside this crop. I think that... Excuse me. I think them showing up in this crop is a lot less likely. Right, unless the weeds have grown tall. I mean, some of them might have. But they usually don't show up very well. Let's, let's go into here. No, it's not going to show up there, is it? And we go there. And there were weeds in there, but there's definitely no weeds here anymore. We'll go and put the spray on the field anyway, because it's a preventative treatment, isn't it? So it not only acts as a treatment, but it also works as a preventative as well. So we just need to run along here. We've sticking out a long way there, isn't it? Out each side of the boom. Or is it? Or is that just me? It might actually just be me. Uh, but yo, we, we, this and we got one more pass. And then this field is done already. Half a million dollars we spent on this thing. And all so that we can do this field in record time. With about three passes. And <laughs> it's done. I'm not sure it was actually worth all of that. However, considering the size of the farm. And we are supposed to be go big or go home, aren't we? Uh, I think overall it was the one that we wanted. It, it, it was definitely it's the one for the job. And then we'll have more use for it later as well. So overall, I think we did make the right choice for this one. There's no point in second-guessing ourselves. We're not going to be overcome with buyer's remorse. Buyer's remorse is a, it's a very strange thing. It's not something that I've often suffered with. I have occasionally thought, oh, I probably shouldn't have bought that. Um... Most of the time, though, no. But you know, I understand buyer's remorse. People buy something and then they get it home and then they instantly um, spend an hour or two beating themselves up over it because they feel guilty and they think that they shouldn't have bought it. 
And that is buyer's remorse. Now, it's, it's a, a very recognized thing, and a lot of companies will spend a lot of time and effort trying to come up with ways so that their customers don't feel guilty about the product that they bought once they get it home. If you're going to go and spend a half a million on something, a bit like this one, you're probably not going to be in a position where you get the thing home and you think, shouldn't have bought that. Yeah, you, 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 you're really not going to be one of you. Buyer's remorse, I don't think, is going to be something that's going to affect you if you're going purchasing a great big monster like this. Now, I'm going to bring that one there and I'm going to unload it like that. And then we're going to go over to the river. I say river, I mean pond. We're going to go over to the pond and we're going to see if we can put water in this one. If we can put water. I don't think we can, though. If we can put water in, we will see if we can spray water onto the fields. But again, don't think that is actually a thing. Now, where can I... I think right there was... No, I do want to... I want to go there where I was. I want to go here. If we're, if we're going to do this, we need to go in here. Don't drive too deep or we're going to be in trouble. Right, I get to there... Right, I'm not going in any deeper than that. I'm wheel spinning as it is. Yeah, and it, it wasn't re it wasn't loading anyway, so that's not a thing. We can't load this. We certainly can't load this one up. So I don't know at the moment if irrigation is even a thing. Can we spray water on the fields in order to alleviate potential damage from? Um, drought or is drought just something that we got to live with now rain should be coming tomorrow how much rain we're going to get remains to be seen and how much damage is going to be done to our field before that rain gets here is also another matter entirely we'll just have to wait and see we'll load this one up and then we're going to go around well we certainly need to put some grain in for the chickens whether we need to worry about doing anything to the other animals just at the moment, I don't really know. Probably not, to be honest. Uh, maybe we could put a little bit in for the cows. So that one's loading up there. Um, yeah, those we're, we're going to ignore. So chickens need grain. They're all right for everything else. Cows over here. We need to clean them up a bit. We've now got 172,000 litres of water in there. We can put two bales in there to take that up to... 37,000 litres. Uh, health has gone up to 60%. It did drop to the 59 because of our issues that we had with um, the, the whole water thing. Hay is still up there at 4373. That's not really changed. So horses, we horses we can just leave them alone. We don't need to worry about the horses. Now, where am I going to put this monstrous great big machine? We're not going to need it for a while now. I suppose I could go and... Actually, I'll go and put it in this other shed over here. We've got that shed now. It's replaced the other barn that we had. We're going to need to make space for a lot more hay in this shed. This is primarily this shed. It's supposed to be for storing hay. So we're going to need to find another shed to go and store the other stuff. But for now, this one can park up in here. There, just like that. That's definitely the sort of, you know, half a million dollars you go and spend, or half a million euros, half a million whatevers. Uh, you're definitely going to be wanting somewhere undercover to keep that one, right? You're somewhere that's a little bit better than just parked out in all the weather. It's, it's definitely not the sort of thing that you would go and do with a, a, an expensive beastie like that. We'll take you, and we will go and clean up those cows. Then we're going to leave the bucket there in that corner. Actually, we will just go and check on the horse. No, it said that the horses said that they're clean, didn't it? Let's jump down to you. Horses don't have a cleanliness thing. There's no meter there for cleanliness on horses. So apparently horses are not messy eaters. It's only cows, chickens, pigs, and sheep that are messy eaters. Horses are not. I think that's... I think there's, there's a bit of prejudice being shown there. I think horses are equally capable of being messy and slovenly eaters. Oh, oops, okay. That used to be a nice cow barn that we had there. Once upon a time, before Frithgar turned up with his loader skills and decided to trash the place. We're going to put this one down. And we will get 
It's going to get the bells. Oh, I know what I want to do. Somebody said that they use... No, I've already tried this, haven't I? I'm sure I've already tried using the bucket to load grain. Put the, the bucket right underneath it, like that. Ah. So we didn't need the other one. I can just use the bucket. Right there, look. See? I can go and take that one. I didn't need the fancy thing. I could have just used the bucket to do this. I'm slightly disappointed about that, to be honest, because I thought that you had to use the fancy thing. Um, you, you wouldn't be able to, you didn't used to be able to use the bucket in FS17. And I'll, I'll be honest, I haven't actually checked anything in this one. So it's it's quite cool that we now have this new feature. In fact, it's very cool that we now have this new feature. But at the same time, I've gone and spent all that money on that really nice hopper. And for what? Wow. Oh. <laughs> okay, the chickens are full, but Frithgar is still going. He's not paying attention to what's happening underneath. He was just looking at the numbers in on the um, on, on the bucket. That's, that's all I was looking at. Frithgar strikes again. Oops. Try and destroy the edge of the feed trough right there. There. I've still got 700 litres here. That's quite a lot. So 2,000 litres of food have gone in for those chickens. That's more than I thought was in there. Now, large chicken coop. It's not telling me how many I've got in there. So I'm going to go over this side. I'm going to have a look in here. This is the only way you find out now. How many you got? 217 chickens in here. I'm going to leave the chickens alone. I'm not going to do anything to them. And we will let them self-populate all the way up to 400 and then we'll change them over so I can go and ditch this one which means that my fancy hopper thing over there I'm not actually going to need anymore there's no real I mean, I mean I don't regret buying it because it's a very cool little thing but at the same time I'm sort of experiencing a bit of buyer's remorse on that one it's got to be said it was fun to play with but was it worth the price tag that's the big question you've got to ask yourself was Fun to play with, but is it worth the price tag? You, know, you go and have a good time for an hour or two, but is it worth forking out all that money for it? That's the big question you've got to ask yourself. And I don't know at this point. I'm I'm, I'm really doubting whether or not it was worth the price tag. I mean, how much did we... A we, couple hours? We, we've had a couple hours of fun with it. Hour and a half, maybe a couple of hours. I mean, I'm talking like in-game time. Um... Where was it? Hoppers, that one was. Was it not hoppers? Uh, overloaders. Where's the overloaders? Does anybody see? No, it's fertilizers. Yeah, auger wagon. That's, it was under auger wagon, wasn't it? And there it is. That one. $8,000. Or 8,000. It should be euros. I know, I know. It should be euros. Um, 8,000 euros for a couple of hours of fun. Was it worth it? Was it worth forking out eight grand for a couple of hours of fun? Honestly, I don't think it was. I don't think it was worth that price tag. I mean, we might be able to get a little bit of money back, maybe a little bit of a refund, if we can point out that we didn't have quite as much fun as was advertised on the package. But, um, honestly... Hang on. See, I'm not very good at lining these up sometimes. There, that's a bit better, I think. We'll go in... There we go. I wanted two bales. That's what I'm after here. I'll try and take two of these. So I've got 8,000 litres there on the bottom one. And if I engage the fork, it will show me that I've got 16,000 litres in total. And I will whiz this over here. And then, as long as i got those forks in, it won't actually do that thing where it pops the top bale. You can do it like that. And then it drops them into the actual feed trough. So then we can have a look down here. Like that. And that is now completely full at 37,606 on there. Grass is staying at 15,000. Cleanliness at 70%. That's going to go up a little bit in a minute. So we are 75% effective because we're using hay and silage. We gain an additional 25% for the others. Straw in here doesn't actually contribute to their overall welfare. All that does is ensure that they produce manure rather than producing slurry that they're producing at the moment. 
So if we have a look back in here, we have got right now, got 150,000 litres of slurry and no manure. If we start putting straw in, we'll get manure instead. And that's the only, that's the only big difference between them. Is there anything else I want to do today? Um... We're going to be wanting to put more fertilizer on soon, surely. We're, what's, what's the fer what's the fertilizer? Fertilizer is completely done on everything. So, I have no fertilizer state. Nothing on there. Remove the lime. Yeah, see? Nothing. No no fertilizer needed anywhere. And the, the, the weed's there. It's not going to do anything. And... Right there, we've got a uh, we've got our drought damaged, but we haven't got anything. I thought that it would have come up withered if it was drought damaged, rather than um, just going to like that. But no, it's not. It's just going like that. And it's cool that we're getting these little patches over. I like the fact that we're getting those little patches like that. I think that's a really awesome thing. Chickens are done. Those are done. The horses are done. We've got everything else done. The only thing that I want to do is I want to just come over here and I want to see how much fertilizer I've got in this beastie over here. I can pick up a little bit of the fertilizer we've got lying in the yard. Yeah, that one. No, I can't. Right. Those pallets can just stay there for a minute. They're not exactly in our way. We can easily get around them. And... We're going to be wanting hay, We're going, I mean, straw is going to be wanted, and then we're going to be wanting silage. So, bale silage is definitely the easiest option, isn't it? However, I'm also liking the idea of getting ourselves some other silage. We can go for a single large bunker like that, or we could go for a double bunker of some kind, or we can go for something like one of these over here. Uh, this right here farm silo there that just gathers up everything but there's some different types of silage bunker now that you can get and you just I haven't got any active on the map uh, but what you can do is you bring the silage and you tip it into you, you bring grass you tip it into the thing and it gets turned into silage over time now if I'm going to be putting down a new bunker it's going to be something like this one and it's going to be over in this bit of field over here. This is where I would like it. Yeah, it's going to be a bit difficult getting in around here, but I've actually got some plans for this. I know that we've got a sign right there, but I'd like to kind of extend the concrete patch out here, out round here on this side, because there's no signs over here. And that will make it easier for swinging in and out, and it also means that we can then justify putting our bunker down over here, and we'll easily be able to get in and out of it. I don't want to go up that way too far, because you, you can see, it's like uh, the, there's a big old hill in the way up here. So this is where we would kind of put this one down. I mean, even if we don't use the, do the grass silage how I'd like to this year anyway, and we just do bale silage this year, we can still use the bunker for somewhere to go and store the silage bales. So there's no reason that we shouldn't go and get this one, methinks. So methinks... Here is a good place. We want to go control Q, lowers it down, control E, lifts it up. Now, if I go like that, where am I going to be wanting to put this one? Up there like that is too high. I don't want it up like that. That's down as low as it will go. That's going to eat in a big chunk out that side. So I kind of want to go up a little bit from there. Say something like that. We're going to have to do a little bit of landscaping around this in order to make it all fit properly. So there's that one right there. Then I'll come out of that and we'll go into start landscaping. And now we've got to change things around a little bit. So I want to go X like this. And I want to press C because I want the, the round one. And then I want to make that a bit bigger like this. We're going to concrete this area over here, plus we're going to level this bit off over here. So I need to go like this first. Well, that's about all we've got time for in today's episode. So we're going to go and take a little bit of a break. We need to chill out on the beach, relax, and build up some strength. So while we're doing that, if you've enjoyed the episode, then could you please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, 
Thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.